So um, the question is, this is the standard photoelectric effect setup, and the question is to make a graph of the relationship between the electron's kinetic energy and the photon's frequency. So first of all, what would happen if we shoot a very low frequency photon at this metal? Let's just describe in words, what happens if you shoot a very low frequency photon at the metal? Well, if it's How below low? the work function. Very low. <laughs> okay, so no electron is ejected. Yeah, if it's a very low frequency, the photon won't have enough energy to emit any electrons. It, what we're talking about in this whole process right now is ionization, right? That's correct. That's right. So the photon is bringing in energy. If it has enough energy, it will be able to strip an electron away from the metal, which means ionizing the metal, and then the electron will go shooting away. Um, however, if the photon doesn't have enough energy, it'll just do nothing. It won't be able to strip away the electron. Well, if the frequency is very low, then the energy is very low, and it can't strip away an electron. So what would be the kinetic energy of the freed electron? Well, a mathematician would say that the kinetic energy of the freed electron is zero, because there is no freed electron. So for very low frequencies, the graph looks like this. For very low frequencies, there is no energy of a freed electron, because there's no freed electron in the first place. Okay. All right, but eventually, um, you'll get to a point where you have enough energy to free, um, to free, the, um, to, to free the electron. Uh, they told us here that the work function was 1.36 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So eventually we'll get to the point where we have just enough energy to free this. Mm -hmm. Now, suppose that we um, have freed the electron, but we only had just barely enough energy to free it. Well, in that borderline case, how much kinetic energy would that freed electron have? Zero, because yeah, because any left over. All of the energy has been used to strip away the electron, and there's none left over for oh, kinetic okay. energy. Okay. But what happens if we continue to increase the frequency even more? Well, then the photon yeah, will have even more energy. Uh, where does that leftover energy go into after it's already freed the electron? Where does it put the remaining energy? It puts the remaining energy into the kinetic into the kinetic energy. Oh, okay. Of the freed electron. And then the more frequency you have. Repeat like why you started at that intercept. At this over here? Yeah. yeah it would take a while in order for it to reject. And then because if, 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 you, if you just equal the work function, you're not going to have any leftover kinetic energy because all the energy went into just freeing the electron. Yeah. So, at, so at that very specific frequency that you need, because it's a very specific one, whatever, so or greater. 12 joules. Yeah, at that very specific one, the kinetic energy is going to be equal to zero because you're not going to have any. Love number. And it can't be a shorter frequency because that one won't eject it. Okay. But once it's even like one joule, let's say, or whatever, 0.5 of a joule greater than that work function, it'll then it'll kinetic. start getting kinetic energy. And it'll rise. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so, um, how, so one thing we should do is, they said to draw the graph here. I think for full credit, they'd want you to actually put a number here to show uh, what this intercept is. So we should be able to figure out what is this threshold frequency. Based on this information here, how can we figure out what's the threshold frequency when we're just barely liberating an electron? What calculation do we need to do? Um, you would convert the work function E equals H new, and you would solve for new. That's right. What do I plug in for E? This work function. So you would do 1.36 times 10 to the negative 19 over 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. So I did that, and I got 2 Let's do that. times 10 to the 14. So what we just figured out is, if the photon has a frequency of 2 times 10 to the 14 hertz, it will have an energy of 1.36 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Okay. Um, and then it would use up all of that energy, freeing the electron, and there won't be any energy left over to put into kinetic energy. So that's why, at this point, we still have a kinetic energy of 0. But now let's say that we have a frequency that is bigger than 2 times 10 to the 14. Well, then it's going to have more energy than 1.36 times 10 to the negative 19. Well, it's going to use up 1.36 times 10 to the negative 19 energy freeing the electron, and whatever is left over is going to go into this kinetic energy. The more energy that we started with, the more that's going to be left over at the end for this kinetic energy. That's why this line becomes upward sloping. And notice that there's, um, 
And, and now we can use the formula that you guys uh, saw. So the kinetic energy equals the original energy of the photon minus the work function. This is the equation that you guys have used in this class. But I've been trying to show you, though, is that this equation is just common sense. Um, the kinetic energy that's left over for the electron is however much energy you started with minus how much you used up freeing the electron. This is, you really shouldn't need this formula to solve problems. You can just use this picture in common sense. But what this tells us is that the kinetic energy is a linear function of nu. I should be using nu here and not f, because that's what your class does, nu for frequency. So what's going to be the slope of this line? Based on this equation. Do you guys remember y equals mx oh, plus oh, b? Oh, the slope is uh, constant. The horizontal variable here is nu. So this coefficient must be the slope, if you remember the y equals mx plus b approach. So the slope of this line is going to be h. OK, so uh, now I guess we've pretty much figured out everything we need here. We know what the x-intercept is, and we know what the slope is. So we figured out what the line is. Um, you could figure out the y-intercept. But you can see the y-intercept must be this. The y-intercept must be the negative of the work function. So here the y-intercept must be 1.36 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Um, you don't actually draw the line out here, though, because you can't never actually have a negative work. You just use this to, to get the line to line up right. But if we did trace it back, it would look like this. Okay. When you're doing these photoelectric effect problems, I really recommend making this picture. Show the photon coming in, the metal, and the electron going out. And then okay. you can see the relationship between everything. Okay. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.